Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everyone here. Let's stand to our feet, please. And uh, aren't you glad to be able to be in here where it's not 50 degrees outside or 40 or whatever it is. But it's in here where it's nice and pleasant. And uh, we really have no reason to complain, but Lord, do we like to. Uh, there's always something that's not to our liking. But today, let's just focus on worshiping Him. And not our com creature comforts and ourselves, but let's just concentrate on lifting Him up. Because He says if He's lifted up, He would draw us to Him. And man, we need that today. So Father, we just want to welcome you, the honored guest, one more time today, Father. As we gather together corporately to worship. May, Father, we understand what it's all about, what we're really doing here. May you teach us, Holy Spirit. We're learning so much about the Holy Spirit from the words, the series. Teach us, Holy Spirit, how to worship the Father and Spirit. And we've heard that and we've read that in the Word, but Lord, I don't know that we've gotten it down in here yet, and I don't know that I have. Help me, Holy Spirit, to learn to worship you, not just singing or, you know, being in a, in a corporate worship service, but as I leave here, how to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We just want to tell you today that we love you, Lord. We thank you, God, for all of the goodness that you've poured out on us. You say every good and perfect gift comes from you, Lord. So we want to acknowledge that and say thank you as a corporate body, Father, and just worship you today. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. It's so good to see you.
What a great song, because we're going to be talking about our story today, because we do have a story, and we have some choices, and we've got God speaking about our story, so yeah, let that song keep going through our heads and our hearts, because God's always got a story, you know, and it's a story for us, and it's a great journey with Him. So good to see you this morning. This book is amazing. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, Jane. Good to see all y'all today. Welcome to Open Arms Fellowship if you're watching online. Welcome to live watching us online. If this is your first time, but there's a card under your chair in front of you, at least I hope there is. And you can get that card and you can share some information about yourself, a prayer request, anything you want to share. You know, I got the coolest prayer request a few weeks ago. A little girl was turning eight. And she turned in a card and said, pray for me to have a great birthday. Like, that is so cool. You know? And I did. I was praying. She had a big birthday party. And so any prayer request, you share it. You just drop it in our offering box over there under the picture. And it comes to me. And I love to pray for the things on your mind and on your heart. And, and continue to pray for Tim and Laura Rose. Uh, Laura's had such a roller coaster week and still in a critical condition. And just continue to lift him up in that journey. It's a tough journey for him. And you probably got some things on your heart and on your mind. And you received a prayer list when you came in. And so if you'd like to join us up here in prayer, you're welcome to. If you would like to pray at the cross, it's back there for you. Or right there where you are. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I'm so thankful for this gift that you've given us. Uh, long before we had wireless internet, we had wireless communication with our Lord. And there's no place where there's not coverage. And it's you. Thank you. And I still, as, as long as I prayed and as much as I pray, I'm still learning how beautiful a gift you've given us that we can communicate with Almighty God. Wow. I don't have a right to. I shouldn't be able to. And yet, you desire it so much you said, call to me. Call out to me. So thank you. Thank you that we just have that privilege. And Lord, let us use it not just for those 911 prayers. Oh, I'm hurting and something's going on. Just to, just to be with you. Fellowship. And to sometimes just be quiet and let you do the talking. Because I need to hear from you. You don't really need to hear from me. You know everything on my mind and heart. And you know more than I do. But thank you, Lord, that you even allow us to pray for others. And I don't know how it works. I just know it works. And so, Lord, I just what a week for Tim and Laura. And I just continue to lift them up. Shine, Jesus, shine. That's what I prayed when I didn't know if Sophia was going to be living. I didn't know what to pray. I just shine, Jesus, shine. Because it's always going to come out good when Jesus shines. And I may not understand it and may not even like it at the moment. But when Jesus shines, it comes out good. So shine, Jesus, shine. And I pray that for everything that's going on in our lives. All of us have some questions. We, we don't know. We don't know the future. We don't even know what's going to happen in our lives later today. But, oh, Jesus, if you shine, it'll be the right thing. Thank you. Thank you for worship. Lord, I just thank you for Ronnie's prayer that I need to block out everything and, and worship. And I sit there thinking as he was praying, about worship. Well, I know a little bit, but wow, there's so much more I need to know about just worshiping an awesome God. And 
So Lord, help me, help us all to put all that stuff aside, all those distractions in worship. And watch what you will do.
You are Jesus, our friend. You are the Holy Spirit, our comforter. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for who you are. Lord, we honor you in this place. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. You may be seated as we continue today. that I am. When I think of myself, I know exactly what you see. Every flaw, every blemish, the scars of my hurts and my mistakes, the things I've done to myself, the things that have been said and done to me, that's who I am. You see a mother, daughter, sister, and aunt you see the scarce shadow of a woman's potential irreversibly wrapped in failure. But then I hear it. That still, small voice. Who told you that? Who told you that you are defined by your mistakes? Who told you that you are ugly and broken? told you that you are only measured by what you give others? Who told you that brokenness and frailty are what you carry? Have you been hurt? You are not what everyone says you are. You are who God says you are, and you are His. He says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He says you are a perfect design, made for a purpose, made for a destiny. He says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He goes before you. He goes behind you. He says you are bold. He says you are brilliant. He says you are brave. He says rare is he that is in you. You are a masterpiece. Hand painted by the master himself. You are Change, boy, they have the March brings us. I mean, we've gone from 80s to 20s, haven't we? It's just like, oh yeah, let's get ready for whatever's happening next. And now it's back somewhere in the 50s, and we had this mass pollen cloud, and it's changed again. And so the winds of change, March brings all kind of changes, and you know the winds of change that we're talking about also brings incredible changes into our lives. Most of you know I have two brothers, and we share some common traits and some similarities, but we're also very different 
in other ways. It's really neat to, to look at pictures of my dad and to see how my brothers look like him at different times in our lives. We got a picture of my dad when he first went into the army. He was in his early 20s. And my younger brother looks so much like my dad at that age. And it's, it's, it's incredible. And then my older brother, he got premature gray like early. I mean, it really bothered him because, you know, his wife got said, is this your dad and stuff like that? <laughs> but he got senior discounts before he was a senior. I'm like, hey, go for that. But his hair turned like white. And my daddy's hair turned white. And, and it's amazing to watch as my older brother gets older how much he looks like my dad. And then there's me. There's hardly any pictures where I resemble my dad at all. And yet, I act more like my dad than either one of them do. And so it's, it's, it's interesting how the, the DNA, the, the learned traits, and all those things mix in that, that we, our, my actions, my brother's actions, our appearances, it, it testifies that we are the sons of Fred Porter. And it doesn't matter what we say, what we do, it, it just happens. And Angie can tell you as I get older, I find myself sounding more like my dad. She probably says, yeah, sounds like his dad. You know, he jokes like his dad. He never stops like his dad. Never stops. And, and it's just, it comes out. And so, so my spirit, the spirit of my brothers, they all testify to my dad's spirit that we are the sons of Fred Ford. We, we, we can't get away from it. You know, and all of us, we, we have this connection to the people in our lives. We, we have a DNA connection that, that we can't get away from, from our birth parents, that, that we have certain things about the way we look and the way we act that got passed down through DNA. And it's just, it's, it's incredible. It's crazy the way it works. And, and then we also have this other influence that's passed down by people who we may never have shared DNA with, but they shared so much influence in our life that we pick up traits from them by the way we act, the way we talk, the way we carry on things. So, so we are, in many ways, the products of, of the DNA influence and also the, the influence of people's actions and then throw in our own selves. So we've got three in the mixture now. We've got DNA, we've got, we've got um, influence, and then we've got ourselves. And... We can't blame anybody else because influence is just that. It's influence. It's not command and control. Okay? And so we now have a responsibility in the choices we make. We can't blame. That's my daddy's fault. I just like, no. We can't do for the older generation the Flip Wilson thing. Yeah, don't let me do it. No. We have choices. Yes, we have influences, but we have choices. And what is true for our physical life is also true for our spiritual life. We have influences. We have the influence of the Holy Spirit. And we have the influence of Satan. And we have a shared DNA. We all have a sinful DNA that was passed down from our father Adam. We, we were all born with a sinful nature. But we also all chose to so we can't blame it on Adam. We can't blame it on the Holy Spirit. We can't even blame it on Satan because we make choices. We make choices every day. Yes, we have influences. Yes. And sometimes it's a hurdle to get over those influences in our lives that were negative or, or were painful or were harmful. But we still have choices. And we have choices spiritually. And we have choices to who is going to influence us the most and how we're going to react to that influence with our daily, everyday choices. So with that, here's the question of the day. What can I, what can you, what can we do starting today? Okay? Starting today. Yesterday's gone. We can't do anything about yesterday. <coughs> Starting today, what can you and I do to walk closer with the Holy Spirit? Hmm. Now, don't try to come up with some long list. I'm going to do it, God. I'm going to do it. Just, just find one thing. Starting today, 
you're going to do to walk closer to the Holy Spirit? Because most of us in the room would say, yeah, I want to walk closer to the Holy Spirit. I, I want to recognize His voice. I, I want to do what He wants me to do. Because He is influencing us. But we also have that sin influence. And we have that choice. But what if we could get to a daily, throughout the day basis, that we were walking spirit about how cool that would be. The Holy Spirit and our spirit walking together all day long throughout the day, no matter what circumstances were coming, we were spirit to spirit. That would change our day. That would change our life. That would change everything. Spirit to spirit. You know, you know God made Adam in his image. That is an incredible thought. That is an incredible study to think that God made humans in His image. God made you and me in His image. That means we have the influence of God made into us. But we've also rejected His influence so much. In fact, as humanity, we, we rejected His influence so much we didn't recognize God when He showed up. God showed up, named Jesus, and he, and he walked among people who were made in the image of God, and yet they didn't catch the resemblance. We should catch the resemblance. But, I don't know, we don't have Jesus walking around and telling us what to do and teaching us, but we do have his Holy Spirit here now. And we should see the resemblance. But then there's all those in. Jesus, he died on the cross to break that control of sin over us. And he came out of that grave to prove <laughs> that he won over sin and death. And so now we're back to influences and choices. That's why we need to be spirit. <coughs> Father, we're about to look at something in your word that is unbelievable. It is mind-blowing to me. It goes beyond anything I could ever hope to dream or imagine. I've seen it before, but every time I see it, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. But it's true. And so... Wind of Holy Spirit, please blow in some change today. Blow in some change the way we think, the way we feel, and blow open our eyes in a spiritual way, in our hearts in a way that we see you differently. And we grow with you, and we get spirit to spirit in a whole new way. so much and what you're about to show us in your word. Amen. I hope you've got a Bible that you can read and understand. If you don't, I would love to give you one. Scripture's on the screen. It's in your handout. We'll go to the book of Romans. We've been like three or four weeks in that dialogue with Jesus and John. I was, I was enjoying that journey. Now we jump to Romans 8, starting at verse 12. So, brothers and sisters, we have no obligation to live the way our corrupt nature wants us to live. If you live by your corrupt nature, you are going to die. But if you use your spiritual nature to put to death the evil activities of the body, you will live. So this is being written to and addressed to Christians. And if you're not a Christian, something tells me by the time we finish this today, you're going to want a bit. Because there's some good stuff in what we're seeing today. But understand as we go through this, the Holy Spirit through Paul was writing a letter to Christians. So Christians have no obligation to live the way our corrupt nature wants us to live. It really means if we're not constrained anymore 
to the desires of the corrupt nature. We're not being made to. We now, if we're a Christian, we now have freedom to choose. That's what this passage is teaching. It's, it's teaching us and telling us that as Christians, we have a choice. Yes, we still have the influence of that corrupt nature and don't go away, but we're not constrained. We don't have to do what that corrupt nature is telling us to do. And verse 13 tells us, if we choose to follow that corrupt nature, what's going to happen? You are going to die. You know, there's no way to say that in a nice way. You are going to die. Now what's interesting is to understand what this actually means. He's not talking about the physical death, even though that's included in there. He's not even talking about death in hell, even though that's included there. What he's talking about is you're going to die in this life. You're going to die to the life that God has intended for you to live because you're no longer following after God. You're running after your corrupt nature. And in our corrupt nature, we're really not living. We think we're living. Oh, the TV shows and the commercials, they show this hedonistic lifestyle. Are you doing this and you're taking part of that and you're living? No, we're not. God says if you follow that corrupt nature, you're dying. You're going to die. It's empty. It's dead. And we fool ourselves for a little while while we think we're enjoying it. And maybe for a moment, the scripture says even sin for a moment is enjoyable. It's killing us. We're not living. There's an alternative. If you use your spiritual nature to put to death the evil activities of the body, you will live. <laughs> now, interesting, the you will live, he's not talking about heaven versus hell, even though that's included. He's not talking about the fact that you'll never die physically, because we are. He's talking about the here and now. You will live. You will live the life that God has for you. You will live this incredible life that you didn't even think was possible. You will live a whole lot better life than you've got planned for yourself. You will really live the real life because you'll be living out what God has planned for you. So Christians, here we are again. We have the influences, right? We have the influence of that corrupt nature. You're going to die. You have the influence of the Spirit. You're going to live. And we have a choice. We have a choice. That's why it is so important that we know how to walk Spirit to Spirit. Let's look at verse 14. Certainly, all who are guided by God's Spirit are God's children. So now we have a test. Ah, nobody likes a test in school. Now we have a test. I had to, I had to take a, a little training course with the work I do for the state convention. And at the end it had a test. And I don't know how many years I've gone, I haven't had to take no test. I had to take a test. I'm like, Take a test. We got a test right here in Scripture. And the test is who's guiding us. See, we're all being guided by something or someone. Uh, we may think, <laughs> I'm free spirit, I can do what I want to do, I'll do everything I want to do, I'm, I'm my own man. No, no. We're all being guided by something or someone. There's influences. And so we've given a little test here. He says God's Spirit. Now if you've been with us the last few weeks, we've been learning the different names of the Holy Spirit because he's got different names. We learned that he's the Spirit of truth. And he's the Spirit of Christ. And so here we learn another one of his names. He is God's Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And so we're posed here with this question. Day to day. And how we think, feel, talk, act day to day. 
whose guidance? Hmm. I'd have to think on that one a little bit. Because we might say, well, sometimes I'm guided by the Spirit. Sometimes I'm guided by me. Sometimes I'm guided by that corrupt nature, that old way. So if you had to score your day, what percentage? Because here we have evidence of the result of the test. <laughs> if you're guided by God's Spirit, then you have evidence you're God's children. If you're not guided by God's Spirit, well, then you have evidence you might not be God's children. Okay? That's what the test reveals. Who is guiding us? Now, I want us to stop and look at the word children here because we're going to see the word children show up two more times before we finish this morning. So the word children here means a child who understands the privileges and the responsibilities of their father. And so then in the context of the scripture, it means a child of God who understands the privileges and responsibilities of our Father. And so we kind of understand that with our children. We expect more from a 10-year-old than a 2-year-old, right? And we really expect more from a 15-year-old than a 10-year-old. Sometimes it don't work out that way, but we expect more. <laughs> and so what this word children here means is an older child in the context of the scripture who has understood and begun to learn the roles and responsibilities and privileges of being a child of God and we're doing them. We're being led by God's spirit to do what our Father God wants us to do. And God would be so proud of us. He looks down and he's like, Oh, you know me, you know my heart, you know my word, and you're doing it. So let's rephrase the test a little bit. If God were to look at your life right now, today, at this moment, would God say, I am so proud of you? If not, why not? Because, see, that's the journey. That's the evidence for a child of God. We are living out the privileges and responsibilities of our Father, and He's looking down going, I am so proud of you. Look at you. You know my heart. You know my directions. You follow them. Now, we can't do that on our own, okay, because we got this influence of a corrupt nature. You know, it keeps reminding James, do what you want to do. No, no, no. That leads to death. That's why we need what? God's Spirit, because He gives us the influence and the power and the strength to know our Father, to know His privileges and responsibilities, and then to live them out. Back to those other verses. Influences. Choices. Oh, we need to be Spirit to Spirit. Fifteen. It's getting good, people. It's getting Good. Fifteen. If you haven't received, if you haven't received the spirit of slaves that lead you into fear again, instead, you have received the spirit of God's adopted children, by which we call out, "Abba, Father." Now, I don't know if you underline scripture, but if you underline, this is an underliner. Okay. <laughs> this. This is a wow. This is, I'm telling you, I've seen it, I've read it, and it just keeps getting better from your own Christian. He's talking to Christians. If you're not a Christian, just hang on. I think you get through this verse, you're going to want to be a Christian. Christian. You haven't received the spirit of slaves that lead us into fear again. Now, fear again tells us that we were once in fear. Remember our DNA. We were born with a sin nature. And we all chose to sin. And even though at moments we thought that was fun, we thought that was really living, we've already been told you weren't living, you were dying. And it brought fear. 
that we tried to cover up the fear. And we'd covered up for a little while, but the fear was still there. We, we feared God's judgment. We fear failure. We fear not measuring up to what other people think. We fear being caught. Boy, if I had everybody raise a hand, like, if you've done something, you're afraid, he was afraid he was going to get caught. Yeah. <laughs> afraid your mom and daddy going to catch you. Afraid the man with the blue light going to catch you. You see, it always brings fear. When we follow that corrupt nature, we live in a bondage of fear. And yes, we hide it well, but it don't go away. It's there. And so we're being told here, guys, that as Christians, because of what Jesus has done in our life, we have not received that slave of fear again. It's not there anymore. It's gone. We're free from we don't have to fear the fear anymore. You know, this word fear is an interesting word. It's actually where we get our word phobia. Do you know there's over 500 listed of phobias in America? There are people afraid of stuff I didn't even need to be afraid of. <coughs> I mean, it's interesting. You, Nicole, man, she is so brave. She's going on mission trips. But when that roach bug come out, oh my goodness. <laughs> that girl moved faster than you ever thought somebody would move to. <coughs> but in Jesus, when we give our heart and life to Jesus Christ, see, the scripture says we're born again. We become something we were not. And instead, <coughs> huge word in this verse, instead of being a slave to fear and sin, Instead of being afraid of shame and the guilt, instead of having the baggage of, of all that, instead, look what he says, instead, we receive the spirit of God's adopted children. Oh, stop and let that sink in. Let it sink in with the context of the whole passage. We have a corrupt, sinful nature that leads to death. We were slaves to fear and sin. But through Christ, because of his sacrifice on the cross and the blood of Christ, instead, guys, <coughs> instead, we receive the spirit of God's adopted children. Does that click yet? Because if that clicks, you're going to say, oh, that's good stuff. We don't have to be the slave of fear anymore. We can be God's adopted children. You, there is no greater transformation for humanity than that right now. Amen. Nothing. Nothing beats that. We don't deserve to be called the children of God because we rejected his fatherhood. to bring that transformation to let us be born again and the word children here means born ones born ones you see we go from corrupt nature slave to sin born ones of God wow I don't think that's sunk in with y'all yet I think y'all gotta let that one sink in because I'm telling you this is about as jazzed the passage I've read and studied on in weeks. Because I don't have to be bound by all that fear and all that shame anymore. Because in Christ, I'm a born one of God. Yes. Wow. This word adoption is a beautiful word. You see, it's interesting how God would do this. I usually plan out my messages like three or four weeks in a row, a month at a time. And so, I, you know, it's been planned long before I knew the circumstances of the week. So I'm teaching on adoption. And guess what? God sends two adults into my life this week who have been adopted. I don't ever meet anybody adopted. Well, here. And yesterday, I got to spend like 45 minutes talking to 
This guy was adopted into family, and hearing his story is a beautiful story. And he went right along with what this word means. You see, when we're adopted into a family, we are chosen. Yes. God loves you and me so much, God says, I want you. God loves you so much that he said, John, I want you. Ronnie, I want you. Granny, I want you. God looked out at everybody sitting in a blue chair today and says, I love you so much, I want you. He picked you. Yeah. You know what that lady said in the video? Don't buy into what everybody else has said and even what we feel. That's right. God picked you. What a beautiful picture and how much God loves us. You know, the other cool thing about adoption is it's irreversible. In the Roman culture, when this was being written, and I did some research in the United States, you can't unadopt somebody. You can't. Guys, I want this to sink in this week, and I want you to grasp just how much God loves you. And understand that He is given you through Jesus Christ the freedom to get rid of all those chains of sin and fear and shame and become an adopted, chosen child of God. Instead, you have received the Spirit of God's adopted children by which we can call out Abba, Father. Let's go back to the content. What's the context? Corrupt nature. Shame to sin and fear. <coughs> Dead. But through Christ, following the Spirit, we get to a place where we get to call out to God. I'm talking God. We're talking God. Okay? Whatever your picture of the Almighty is and His glory in heaven far above anything we could ever dream or imagine, He said to the Christian, call out to me, Abba, Father. Now, Abba is, is, is a Greek word. If you ever want to learn a Greek word, it's just right there. That's why it's spelled a little weird from our English. There's no translation, no transliteration. This is it. This is, this is the word. Now, we can't even grasp the full context of this word because we're not Greek people and we live in the Greek culture. But let me do the best I can to explain it. It's the most intimate term you could ever have for your father. For me, as I was thinking about this this week, in the last few weeks of my dad's life, we were staying with him every night. And so many nights he was in his bed on the other <coughs> side of the room and I was in my bed and on the other side of the room and I'd say, Daddy, I love you. was my term, daddy. Yeah, he was Fred Porter, but he was, he was daddy. And I was so thankful for those nights that I'd get to say, daddy, I love you. Good night. The Almighty God has said to his children, call out to me, daddy, I love you. Daddy. Daddy. Some of us would might say, well, that sounds irreverent. Well, it would be, except God said we could do it. <laughs> Guys, do you get the transformation from slave to fear and shame to daddy? God, I love you. Yes. And not only does Abba mean the closest, most affectionate term we could call out to God, it actually means a welling up inside of emotion toward our Father. So if we're Christians, there is just something stirring inside of us like a fountain of water busting out to say, I love you, Daddy, Father God. I love you. Yeah. Yeah. He's that close to us. Now, I know we've all been trained up to reverence God and be better. And I know there's even some religions, they won't even name the name of their God so reverent. And we better remember our God. But when our God gives us permission to say, Daddy, let's call out to Daddy. Because you know what it means? It means we're walking so close to Him. We're so intimate with Him. 
He's so real to us. He's not a faraway God that we can't connect with. He's Pop. He's Dad. Do you know God that well? Are you still wrestling with those chains of slavery and fear and the corrupt nature? Because you see, in our corrupt nature, we can't know Daddy right now. Because we're following a different The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we're God's children. Look who shows back up again. The Spirit. And the Spirit is doing something for us guys. And the wording here is really cool. The Spirit Himself. You know, if you came to me and said, Pastor James, I wondered if the church could do something for me. And I'd say, okay, so-and-so would do that for you. We'll take care of it. Or I would say, no, don't worry. I will take care of that myself. Okay? Now you know whose responsibility is on. <laughs> and now you, you heard it from my mouth that I was going to take care of that. That's what the wording means here. The Holy Spirit himself, he's not sending an angel to take care of it. The Holy Spirit himself, he's doing something for us. He's testifying. He's corroborating He's confirming. He's witnessing. He's on our side. He's in our corner. Years ago, we went down to Puerto Rico. And I reckon God was testing all of us. Because it had rained. And there was mud. And not Ronnie can verify. This ain't a preacher story. That mud was probably <coughs> five, six, seven, sometimes eight inches deep. It was mud. And we were asked to build a Sunday school building. And they didn't, none of us really know much about building. But we were willing to try. And I was running the wheelbarrow, and I could never figure out how to start that thing and make it run by itself. <laughs> but I'd run my wheelbarrow down a piece of wood to try to get through that mud, because you couldn't push it through the mud. And every time I'd run my wheelbarrow back to a cement machine, there was Ronnie standing. And when I talk about a cement machine, I don't mean he just got to sit there and turn the switch on and on. No, no, no. He had to shovel in the sand. He had to shovel in the rock. And he had to put in the water. And one time he figured out you don't hold on to that shovel when it's in the mixer because he got a ride one time. <laughs> but let me testify to you that every time I went back with my little girl, Ronnie Stanley was working hard. And he was muddy and he was wet and he was dirty and it was going to rain on us another minute. So we were all just soaking wet. I can testify to you every time I went back, that man was working. Holy Spirit is in our corner if we're a child of God saying you are a child of God. When the world starts causing doubt in our mind. When Satan starts creating the wonder and the doubt and saying are you. Even when we in our disobedience feel like a defeated devil, old dog just how could God love me I guess. The Holy Spirit if you're really a Christian he's going well, hold on child of God. Child of God. Yeah. Satan back up. Child of God. Child of God. You want to know the Spirit does some incredible stuff for us, God, but this is one of those cool ones. He's there in our corner. Child of God. Yes. And we need that. See, that's why it's so important for us to be able to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll get down and get in the dumps and start down. And Satan, he's the master of doubt. Well, he can create doubt when we didn't think there was no doubt. And we start listening to that influence. And oh, oh, the Holy Spirit's so over going, no, no, child of God, child of God. Do you hear him saying that to you? Have you heard him testifying on your behalf? If not, It's evidence. Back the other one? Yeah, evidence. If we're doing what the Father wants, it's evidence. Here's the evidence. 
Prince of the really are Christian, the Holy Spirit will be saying, Hold oh, down, yeah, child of God, child of God. <coughs> you want to know we need to be spirit to spirit? Ooh. We need spirit to spirit on that one. Verse 17. This just this one just gets gooder, guys. It just gets gooder. <laughs> if we are God's children. We are also God's heirs. If we share in Christ's suffering in order to share his glory, we are heirs together with him. The word children again. Here it goes back to the first word. We know the privileges and responsibilities of being a child of God. And because we're a child of God, we're God's heirs. We're God's heirs, guys. I don't know how many of us, probably everybody in the room who's drinking and winning that water in multi millions of dollars. God, if you would just let me win that, I would do these things. A child of God is the heir of God. And millions of dollars ain't nothing compared to what our God's got. He pays his streets with gold. It's just paved. It ain't mean nothing up there. A child of God gets what Jesus gets. Because we're joint heirs with Jesus. We get eternal life in heaven. Beat that. <laughs> we get the Holy Spirit now. We get the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and all that stuff and more. It's part of being a dear of God. But we also get suffering. Mm. We don't like suffering. It's part of the journey. Jesus suffered. Jesus had friends who turned their back on him. Guess what's going to happen to us? Jesus had people who said mean things about him and what were true about him, said things behind his back. Guess what's going to happen to us? For us, it may be partially true. It was never true for him. People beat Jesus and nailed him to a cross. Just know that being a child of God also means there's suffering. And you know, it's interesting, it's usually in that suffering is when we often start creating doubt, don't we? Does God really love me? Look what I'm going through. Am I really a child of God? Why would God let his children go through this? That's why we need that Holy Spirit. Of no! Child of God! Child of God! <laughs> You'll suffer just like the Savior suffered. But don't miss this. Oh my goodness. I don't care how many times I read this. It just blows my mind. If we share in Christ's suffering in order to share in his glory, Christians will share in the glory of Jesus Christ. You want something to think on that will make the best week you've ever had in your life, no matter what circumstances come your way, Christians get to share in the glory of Jesus Christ. His glory will roll over us. It will pour down on us. Folks, we will be seen in the same glory as Jesus Christ. Amen. How can that be? I remember the last time y'all seen a press conference, you know when somebody speaks, somebody important, they have like four or five people behind them. Some of them's got lots of badges on their chest. They're all important people, and they're usually sitting there on purpose because they get the honor of being in the glory of the speaker. My friends, a child of God gets to be in the glory of Jesus. Yes. I don't even, I can't even imagine how incredible that's going to be. His glory. Take it from the top. Context. Corrupt nature. Chained to sin and fear. But the child of God showered in the glory of Jesus. Yes. You know what? We all have things in our life that create doubt. It's going to come this afternoon. It's going to come. In fact, 
perhaps you may be sitting there right now. Things going through your head and your heart going, am I really a Christian? Am I really doing the right thing? See, it just happens. It's, it's part of our corrupt nature. That's why we need to know. We need to know, we need to know, we need to know if we're a child of God is the most important decision ever. And if we are, we'll hear the Holy Spirit say, yeah. So this morning, could you honestly say you're spirit to spirit with the Holy Spirit? Can you honestly say that you personally have heard the Holy Spirit say, yeah, child of God? If not, don't wait. Don't wait. Don't stay in that fear. Don't stay in that shame and guilt. Call on the name of Jesus. And, and he will transform you to a child of God. Christian, are you wrestling with fear and doubt? Oh, we get there, but we don't need to stay there. Holy Spirit said, child of God. Heir of God. Share in Jesus' glory. What do you need to do right now, today, to say, yeah, Spirit. You stand with me as I pray for us. Father, I, it, this is unbelievable. I know what I deserve. I know how you should treat me. And I know what you just said in the scripture. But I know it's only possible because of the blood of Jesus. The forgiveness available through Jesus. Father, I thank you so much that the Holy Spirit is real and He is here and He is walking among us every day at every moment and He's doing so much for us that He brings confidence and assurance. And Lord, if we don't have that confidence and assurance today, let's not wait. Because we need it. Thank you, Father, for wanting to adopt every one of us, no matter what our journey's been. You pick it to us right now. This altar is here for you to come and maybe you just want to say thank you, God, because you've heard the Holy Spirit say, yeah. Maybe you need to come to me or one of the guys at the back and let's talk to you about being a child of God. What do you need to do right now to be spirit?